Hey YouTube, this video is a direct follow-up to questions I asked you in the route precedence video. If you haven't watched that video, go ahead and pause this video and go watch that one first. There's a link in the description. Otherwise, where we left off with the other video was asking you these two bonus questions. Currently, I have two routes to the Nines network. I have this route for 9.999.0/24 learned via EIGRP, and I have this route for 9.999.128/25 learned via RIP. The first question was, how will the routing table change after I add this static route? So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then I'll do my show IP route command, and we'll take a look at how it's different. Notice before I had two routes, and now I still have two routes. The only difference is this route for a slash 24 is currently learned via static route. Our route for a slash 25 is different than the slash 24 we just added, so that route is unchanged. But this slash 24 route added via static route has an admin distance of one. And when compared to EIGRP's admin distance of 90, the one is a better admin distance, so this static slash 24 replaced our EIGRP slash 24. And so that answers the first question of how the routing table will change after adding the static route. Which brings us to the second question. The second question is, what path will router one choose to get to the IP address 9.9.9.129? And we can verify that by doing a trace route. And you'll notice that the first hop in each case was router 2. Even though we added a static route that told router 1 to use router 5 to get to this slash 24 network. Once again, just like before, the most specific route always took precedence. Even though 9.9.9.129 matches both of those routes, since this route was a slash 24 and this route was a slash 25, this rip route, which was a slash 25, which was more specific, even though it had a worse admin distance, took precedence over this route to go via router 5. That's why the first hop in this trace route, in all cases, was router 2, which is the path we learn via rip. So that's it for answering those bonus questions. I hope this video and the route precedence video answered for you once and for all exactly what a router does when it's determining its best path if multiple paths exist. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please share it across your networks and definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video drops. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.